Why are China's trains crashing? Why are they falling apart? trains supposed to be a massive part of China's success story? Why is this being covered up so successfully? Well, it's a lot more than just crashing. And it's being covered up because China's darling project, the high-speed rail network, is on the brink of collapse and not just physically, but financially too. In this day and age where cybercrime, identity theft, and data security is such a priority, you need to make sure that you're on a VPN. And my VPN of choice is Surfshark VPN. With a selection of tons of servers, you connect and then all of your traffic goes through an anonymous encrypted tunnel. Things like your credit card information and other things that you don't want stolen are protected when you're connected. This keeps the bad guys out, but it gives you some added benefits. For example, during the holiday season, you can save your money because you can use Surfshark's VPN to get better prices. Are you looking for plane tickets or hotels? Companies will actually figure out where you are based on your internet connection and they'll charge you accordingly. But you can use Surfshark to change servers to different countries and a lot of the time, it'll give you a better deal. There's a special offer right now. And for a limited time, you can go and get Surfshark's Black Friday deal. If you go to surfshark.deal slash 86 you can get up to six additional months for free. That is surfshark.deals slash 86 and use the code lawai86 and protect your online privacy today. Over the course of 10 years, I rode on China's trains extensively. From slow trains with the farmers, sharing booze and cigarettes and stories, to sitting next to high-level CCP officials in northern China in first class on the high-speed rail. I've seen it all. They're fine. The, the trains, I mean, not the CCP officials. Until they're not. China has seen an absolutely catastrophic rate of failure when it comes to not only their trains, but a lot of their infrastructure. Countless crashes, countless derailments. In every corner of China, there has been a train disaster. Bridges too. Bridges and trains. The two things that China loves to promote to you as a foreigner living abroad. These things that they invest in always seem to fail. You don't believe me? Well, just look at this compilation of train and bridge failures that you probably haven't seen because China doesn't want you to see them. And do you know why? Because the investment would stop. For a country that invests this much money into their rail system, you'd think they'd do it better. After all, a report in 2019 puts the total build costs at about half a trillion dollars. Half a trillion. You know what's interesting about that? When the train, the high-speed rail collapsed in Wenzhou in 2011, instead of talking about maybe how they could fix the safety standards and how they could maybe improve on things, do you know what they did? Well, they arrested all the people that were talking about it. They tried to cover up all the media that was trying to cover the fact that a train had just derailed and killed a bunch of people. And instead of actually fixing the problem, they brought in bulldozers and earth movers to bury the train cars while people were still inside to cover it up so that people couldn't see it. And I'm not even joking with you right now. That's exactly what happened. And I think you can kind of see some of China's priorities laid bare right out on the table there. Anyway, getting back to the money side of things, guess what? The operating costs are about the same as the amount of investment. So, so much for profitability. You can tick that box off. In fact, in a Japanese forward, a Chinese professor, Zhao Jian at Beijing Jiao Tong University said that many of the lines on China's high-speed rail network in China are unprofitable. Not like having struggling to make money, they don't make any money. And he also noted that China's railway has three times the debt of Evergrande. 
You know that property juggernaut that is threatening the very economy of China right now because of its failure? Again, the rail debt is three times that. In fact, China's rail debt is almost one trillion dollars now. Let's be honest. No one thinks of quality when you hear the term made in China, but the Chinese government has also spent billions of dollars to make you think otherwise. They want you to love these trains. Either way, they've invested not just in the trains themselves, but also getting foreigners, I mean non-Chinese people, to promote them. Geez, you have no idea how many foreigners they've gotten to talk about how awesome China's trains are. It is relentless. You've actually probably seen some of the campaigns. China's infrastructure, China's high-speed rails, or my favorite, China is 3,000 years in the future. Why does China think that showing a train going through a building is so damn impressive? Imagine living in that building. <laughs> Can you even imagine that? Also, does China think that no one realizes that they always film at night so that no one can see the apocalyptic pollution. I noticed that when people started looking at China propaganda and they started calling like China cyberpunk, the Chinese government took this as a positive and they started showing off. They were embracing the whole cyberpunk thing. But what they didn't realize is that cyberpunk is dystopian. Like, Cyberpunk is supposed to look like after the end of the world. And yeah, China does look 3,000 years in the future. In a future where the world is over and everything has gone to hell. Now, this seemingly innocuous barrage of propaganda across your social media, trying to make you love trains, has a genesis. And that propaganda campaign is called Jiang Hao Zhong Guo Gu Shi, or Tell China's Story Well. This was invented by the man himself, dictator-in-chief Xi Jinping. And it's covered it all, not just trains. From making China look like a utopian paradise to silencing critics abroad, like myself. They've pulled out all the stops to paint the rosiest of pictures imaginable of one of the worst dictatorships imaginable. One of the bigger elements of that long-term propaganda campaign has actually been to promote China's high-speed rail network. This was decided by the top leadership that the trains were the most important pillar of making China look good abroad. I guess China ran a propaganda version of a focus group and they found out that everyone freaking loves trains. Or maybe it's just the Chinese government that freaking loves trains because their propaganda efforts have been hilarious. In fact, China's state-sponsored media has put out propaganda of completely photoshopped AI trains that look insanely ridiculous, and they expect you to believe that they're real. In fact, it's not just trains. They've done lakes and mountains, they've done scenery. They keep making these AI images and then passing them off as real, trying to show China's prowess. And I guess they think you, as a consumer, as a viewer on social media, they think you're blind. I mean, this stuff is hilarious. Thank you, CCP, for giving me all this material. Anyway, so the trains suck. We've figured out that they crash a lot, they're not profitable, you know, the failure rate's very high, and yet, they are the envy of the world. I mean, seriously, open up any newspaper, watch any news broadcast. The one positive thing people say about China is that their high-speed rail network is incredible and the US is so far behind in infrastructure because China is dumping all this money and they, at least they have a government that does something about their public transportation. So what gives? What is the actual truth here? What clown world has world leaders and politicians clamoring over China's potential powder keg failure? If what I'm saying is true, then why would anybody be looking up to China for this? Well, it's that marketing that I was telling you about. Propaganda can't be marketing. When you control everything like the Chinese government does, you can craft exactly what the rest of the world sees about yourself. You can control the narrative, you can silence criticism, you can run the gamut. And that's exactly what dictatorships do. China ranks at the bottom of the world for press freedom because they only allow carefully crafted state media that they make. Now you might ask yourself, how can something almost a trillion dollars in debt that is made poorly and is still not profitable keep going? 
Well, it's usually corruption that can answer that question as to why such a horrible industry can continue. But there is another thing that keeps this stupid, unprofitable disaster afloat. And that's, it's because there's too much on the line. It's too big to fail. Heads would roll and nobody wants to be held accountable. But you say, here's the caveat, it's state owned. This isn't a private endeavor. Well, if the China high-speed rail network is state owned, yeah, why does it matter if they're like $900 billion in debt? If they have no one to answer to and there's no outside investment, why does it even matter if it operates at a massive loss? Can't China just print money and shut up critics like they always do? If they make everything and they fund everything directly, how does the loss impact anyone at all? Well, without getting too much into economics jargon, it does matter a lot. There are a lot of people they owe that money to. That trillion dollars in debt, that's owed to people. And those people would be super pissed if China Railway defaults. It could be debt held by Chinese citizens, like officials, or maybe it's in their pension funds, in which case a default screws over their own citizens or even Chinese government officials. It could be that the debt is held by institutional investors, in which case a default would be a major embarrassment, like a full on meltdown of a major Chinese firm related to many of China's propaganda wins on the world stage. Think about that loss of face. China wants to pretend that China Railway isn't actually state owned. They want people to think it's privately owned. It kind of wants it both ways. They listed China's railway group on the Shanghai Stock Exchange with eight shares listed in Hong Kong. And China Railway has issued debt to investors with themselves listed as the guarantor. Though they are 47% owned by the state. So this gets kind of murky legally because what happens in a default? What happens if China Railway goes under? Is the Chinese government just a shareholder? Well, I'd bet that any borrowers would, in a default, sue to have the Chinese government included as a guarantor. Or they could go down the rabbit hole of fraud with construction quality and sweetheart deals for party members and their families, firms, etc. Even worse, someone could threaten the nuclear option making the Chinese government go full-on guarantor or accessory to fraud and then pushing to make Chinese government bonds subject to cross default. And that would essentially be threatening that a default on China railway bonds would be seen as a default on all Chinese debt, which would roll global bond markets and dwarf the 2015 equity meltdown. Now, that's an unlikely scenario, but if I were a bondholder, I'd consider doing it if I thought I wasn't going to get all my money back. That's the only way that China can participate in this whole facade of being a capitalist country. This is also why China can't explicitly print money for the China Railway. It would be seen as evidence that they are the guarantor of China Railway. They don't want to be seen as the whole kind of owner of this thing. China Railway defaulting would be ugly and a huge loss of face. It's their darling child of propaganda. Defaulting could be used to beat up Beijing and threaten to put all of their government debt in a state default. And that is unlikely, but wow, what a show it would be. And if I were a bondholder, I'd threaten to make sure I got my money back too. Now this tightrope walk is something that China does all the time. There's this hilarious stereotype that the Chinese government plans ahead, that there's some wise forward thinking entity and democracies are only short-sighted, only focused on the election cycle. The truth is, is that China is reactionary. China is a short-sighted country. China has a government that waits until their property market bubble is so big that when it pops, it will drive the country into madness. China has a government that has polluted their own country to the point where 99% of people in China suffer the health effects related to air pollution. And it's polluted so much of its fresh water sources that it's to the point where 90% of fresh water is unusable now. China has a government that operates a high-speed rail network that is almost a trillion dollars in debt to make foreigners in different countries think that it looks cool on social media. China makes knee-jerk reactions and then it lies and bullies its way through deceit and trickery. But somehow, our leaders keep cheering them on. Go figure. If you guys wanna see more up-to-date stuff, 
go check out my live show. It's called The China Show. It's every single Friday. You're gonna wanna be there. It's all the good stuff, the bad stuff, everything in between. It's the fun stuff, it's the entertaining stuff, it's what's viral in China. It's all of China's current events jam-packed into one, one and a half hour show. You're absolutely gonna love it if you check it out, I promise. Go check it out, make sure you're subscribed and I'll catch you on the next one.